this beautiful Lord's Day. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And together let us pray the collect of purity. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. And they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemimiah, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapah. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old 
and full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the psalm as we sing. they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. They called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, Bartimaeus regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you, O Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Yes. Please be seated. Well, good morning, and how good it is to be back with you after my sabbatical. Uh, some of our travel plans got changed, but it was certainly a time of rest and renewal. And uh, Father Tom emailed me and just expressed uh, your great support for him and how much he enjoyed serving you all here at St. James. But I'm just so blessed to be your priest. So good to be back. I love these encounters when Jesus turns interruption into an opportunity for ministry. It's not very often that we know who the interrupter is. A lot of times names are not given, but we have the name of the troublemaker, Bartimaeus. We don't know how long Bart was sitting on the roadside begging people with disabilities in Jesus' day and even often in our own society are considered burdens rather than blessings. And I am thankful to God for those family members and caregivers who provide the care and advocacy for persons with special needs. For Bart, there was something that was going to be different about this day. He was going to encounter Jesus. Now, Bart must have heard about Jesus, this teacher and healer, and maybe Jesus would do something special for him. So Bart began to shout, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. I like the response of the crowd, be quiet, quit making a scene. That's not appropriate. Jesus wouldn't want to have anything to do with you. But then Bart shouted even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus, Jesus stopped dead in his tracks. He stopped and he said, call, call him here. I think everybody in that crowd got really silent. They all looked at Bart and they said, get up. Jesus is calling you. Take heart. It says that Bart sprung to his feet and was led to Jesus. Jesus asks a very simple question. What do you want me to do for you? And Bart says, let me see again. From that statement, we have to consider that Bart must have been able to see before and sometime during his life, he lost his sight to illness or accident. 
And when Bart calls out to Jesus, he uses that messianic title or phrase, son of David, have mercy on me. If you remember when Jesus announced his messianic ministry, when he went to the synagogue, when on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If you've been listening to the hymns that we've been singing, it all talks about healing and restoration and the touch of God. Thank you, Luke, for, are you back there? Oh, there he is, there's a hand. Okay, see that? Fits in so perfectly because of this healing power of Christ, this messianic message, the coming of the kingdom. Jesus' response to Bart then is, go, your faith has made you well. We see that Bart could see. But he doesn't just go and do his own thing. It says he followed Jesus on the way. Bart got kingdom vision a renewed purpose in life, and he chose to follow the way of Jesus. Now Bartimaeus, if you were just to look at the word Bar, B-A-R means son in Hebrew, and Timaeus, so his, he's son of Timaeus. But the meaning of Timaeus, the name, this is what it translates from the Hebrew, is son of he who is highly prized. Son of honor. How many times people, we, we have either experienced being marginalized or overlooked, or we've done that to others. And Jesus stopped, and the image of God in Bartimaeus, Yamago Dei, Bartimaeus was worth something. And we see that throughout Jesus' ministry, that the lives he touched, for people who just needed to know that God loved them and cared about them, and they were highly prized. In the Gospels, if you read often, Jesus has this annoying habit of asking the most obvious questions to those who seek healing from God, who are seeking wholeness in their lives. Persons seeking that messianic healing, wanting to see, walk, or hear, to have the demons removed. God loves to know what we need for healing in our lives. Sometimes we need to speak what we need. Healing is not only physical, but it is also spiritual, relational, and emotional. And my friends, God is still a God of healing and who can bring wholeness. Probably one of my favorite devotional books was written by Father Henry Nowen. It's called The Wounded Healer. I don't know if any of you have read it, but Henry talks about how that those of us who've been wounded in various ways we can find healing, and then we become like puzzle pieces. Those, those of you who have encountered and had to deal with cancer, you can talk and relate to other people who've had cancer. Because you know what it's like to go through the treatments and coming out on the other end. Those of you who have dealt with addiction, your sobriety becomes a, a, a place of hope for those who are addicted to say there's a way and you can connect with them in ways others cannot. Whatever we experience in this life, God can take it and transform it and help us to share in becoming wounded healers 
touching lives because of how God has helped us through difficult challenges and times. The best transformation for all of us is God's transforming love and grace through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That what makes us different. We are filled with the love of God, to love God, ourselves, and others. And we need to share this message of God's healing and transforming love more intentionally and every day with those we come in contact with. Wouldn't it be great if people come up to you and go, what's different about you? Haven't you gone through some difficult times, tough times? Why are you, why are you like kind of happy? You're weird. <laughs> but God can take our hurts and our illness and our disease, heal us, change us, transform us. I think Jesus is still asking each of us, individually and as a community, what do you want me to do for you today? I hope our answer will be, oh, Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and to follow you more faithfully, bringing your healing and transforming love and presence to all. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our common faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, open our eyes to your presence. Continue your healing in our lives and in our world. Enable us to see what we can achieve for your kingdom. As your love touches us, may we reach out to others with justice and mercy. We praise you for all women and men of vision, for all who have built up your church and improved your world. We pray for writers and musicians, for inventors and scholars, for church synods and councils, for our Bishop-elect Paula and all who minister to us, especially Father Don. In our parish cycle of prayer, we remember Father Don Fry and David Shallow, Greg and Bonnie Fuller, and Jim Gould and Jenna Karatstra. Lord, open our eyes. We glory. We thank you for all who through their goodness have provided for us. 
We thank you for those who have educated and trained us. We pray for teachers and school administrators. We thank you for those who care for us. We pray for doctors, nurses, and dentists, for physical and speech therapists. We especially remember those who are in need of your healing. Frank, Gary, Zola, Idle, Elliot, Alyssa, Mallory, Dan, Fraser, Peggy, Paula, Andrew, Dan, and Margaret. Lord, open our eyes. That we may behold your glory. We pray for all who have lost vision, all for whom the future looks bleak, all who have lost their way and are in trouble. We pray for all who are disabled physically, intellectually, and psychologically, through birth, injury, or old age. We also remember the many people around our world who are suffering terribly in Haiti and Afghanistan, in Latin America, and the Middle East. May leaders of governments see their needs and respond with justice and compassion. Lord, open our eyes. That we may be your glory. We give thanks for all whose vision is now clear. We pray for loved ones departed who now behold your glory in its fullness. Lord, open our eyes. That we may behold your glory. Almighty God, open our eyes. Touch us with your spirit of justice and healing. Through Christ your Son, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to all, and good morning to all of you on Zoom. It's good that uh, you, we can all be together today. Um, I think I can take my mask off for now, so, oops. Uh, just an announcement. Um, the intention of our Eucharist this morning will be for uh, Rosemary Baton. We got word uh, that Rosemary had passed away on September 9th. Um, and so uh, we want to celebrate and give thanksgiving for her life as we celebrate the Eucharist. Uh, Rosemary was a kind of a short time member here, but well loved, involved with the Altar Guild and a faithful member. So uh, we will, uh, she did not have any family. We were kind of her family. And so uh, we're uh, very saddened to hear of her passing, but uh, give thanks to God. Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever proclaim the glory of your name as we sing. <laughs> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
for the people of God.
Now the father bounced back and said, wait for me, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, first off, uh, let's give Father Don a uh, round of applause for being back. Sorry about that. I, I missed my cue. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Noel, Jennifer, and Nate. Bless them uh, with um, new insights and new learnings and discoveries this coming year. Give them strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, the, over the past few weeks, you've probably gotten some of the stewardship mailers that have come out. Our stewardship drive just began and will be continuing for a few more weeks. If you have not received the mailer, which has stories of saints and personal reflections from members and some thought-provoking material, uh, make sure that you get in touch with Carrie so that you can get that. Uh, there's been a couple that have come out. It'll come out for a few more weeks. And thank you for the people who put those together. They're great. Um, as you know, not only is Halloween coming up, but we also have Halloween, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. For the All Saints Remembrance, if you have a name you'd like to add to the list for people to be remembered here from the congregation, contact Carrie. For those of you that are interested in all the Halloween festivities, regardless of whether you are young or just young at heart, there's plenty of stuff going on in West Dundee. There's going to be things that are taking place over at Grappleman Park. Um, some things there, and you can also offer some donations for the fish food pantry while you're there too. Trick-or-treating hours are also mentioned. And if you have any intercession prayers that you would like added, please feel free to contact Carrie to have any new names. Are there any other announcements for the good of the parish? Um, Jim and I have got a request for gift cards, and I asked Jim if the program is still open and available, and it is. Um, so if you have any requests, we will get those set up for next week. It's okay with you, Father Don. Oh, yeah. To pursue that, because our neighbor next door is a world center. very much. I'll come back over here. Again, it's good to be back. Um, and uh, Paul, uh, we got away for one week. Uh, that was great. We had a good time getting away. Our vacation to Hawaii got canceled, but we postponed it till next year. So we're fine. And I did visit five other Episcopal churches in the diocese, and nobody does everything the same. Um, each of us are unique. The liturgy is the same, but things that happen within the liturgy have been different. So it was fun to, to visit and uh, to see what's going on, but also to hear uh, the good reports of all that's been going on. And so thank you again for uh, the gift of the sabbatical and the time away. Um, a couple prayer announcements. Do keep our bishop-elect in your prayers. Uh, we had mentioned her husband, Andrew McClain. Um, he has the same type of cancer that Colin Powell uh, had, the myeloma, and um, he is in palliative care at this point. It's not looking good. So uh, the, the wait on Paula is she would love to come and serve and be bishop, but 
She's got other uh, matters going on along with her own uh, recovery, which is going along well. Um, and also a special prayer request that I'll be adding. Uh, many of you remember uh, our friends Elizabeth and John. Um, uh, John is the one that's been in the wheelchair and uh, in, in most of his life. And uh, he uh, is such a blessing to, to at my home parish and to David and myself. Uh, he's been in the hospital about five times um, over the past several months uh, with his feeding tube and infections. And it's just hard, very, very hard on him and Elizabeth. So I would just ask your prayers for them uh, as they navigate uh, those days ahead. So, um, but again, thank you for your faithfulness and uh, all that's going on. And uh, I think that's it for now. Um, I did uh, develop sciatica this week, so I'm in excruciating pain right now. <laughs> I'm glad this isn't being recorded. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is? Oh, great. I thought you guys... No, kind I forgot of... to turn it off. So oh, okay. Well, now, now it's out. So uh, hopefully I will be seeing my... Uh, I see my doctor on Tuesday, so hopefully I'll get some relief at some point. But um, I apologize for my, my limping at this point, but um, I got through the service, so I felt very glad. So... Um, again, good to see you all. Blessings and uh, join us for coffee hour.